So I've had this magnetic knife block for quite a while and I used it back when I still lived in apartments and I had a lot more room for things like knives. You can see that it's designed to stand up straight, um, you know, on a flat surface. And then the way it works is you take, for instance, a knife and magnetic, pretty strong grip. Not gonna really go anywhere even when you move it around. So there isn't really enough room on the boat, unfortunately, to keep it kind of, you know, sitting on a surface. And as well, it's probably not also the most safe thing since it's probably gonna move while the boat's underway. So my thought process was since I'm not gonna be able to use it, I might as well see if I can repurpose it. So my plan is to take off the metal uh, stand or the metal foot piece down here. You can see it has just some Phillips screws holding it. And my idea is to take it and then drill um, four holes through in the corners and then actually mount it up here on this wall. It turns out that I actually did have screws that will uh, be used to mount the magnetic knife holder onto the wall. So um, like I said, <coughs> the wall here actually turns out to be exactly three quarters of an inch thick um, or potentially not exactly but pretty darn close to three quarters of an inch thick. It might be something metric in millimeters, but um, what I did was I found some stainless screws that the previous owner had, which I was pretty happy with. I don't have to go to the hardware store. And so what I did was I drilled holes in each of the four corners of the magnetic knife holder. And then what I did was I fed the screws through and pushed them through just enough. And unfortunately, a little bit came off of this while I was drilling, but that's going to be on the side, um, kind of closest inwards, so most people aren't going to be able to see it. Um, but what I did <clears throat> was brought the screws out a little bit, so you can see that the point is sticking up there. Same with every every end here. And once I got the uh, knife holder leveled and in the correct position, I went ahead and actually just whacked each of these screws with um, a screwdriver. So what it did was it imprinted those four, the location of those four screws, uh, imprinted those, those little dots, you know, created from the point onto the wall here. And then once I had the imprints of where the screws were, I just went ahead and uh, drilled a little bit and just made sure not to go too far through this um, three quarter inch wood here. So, and there we have it. The knife block is up with three of the knives on it. Unfortunately, I should have drilled a larger bit through here so that the screw was really only focusing on getting into this wood rather than going through this wood and this wood. You can see it was a little bit difficult getting it in there and uh, this screw is slightly stripped. If I zoom in a little bit. And some of these rings around here you see were me using vice grips getting it on the last little bit in. But it's definitely on there. <laughs> it's not, not coming off anytime soon and I don't even know if I can get it off if I try at this point. I'd probably have to drill out this screw and probably the other ones as well. So it's up there permanently. Um, but it looks good. Knives are nice and sturdy and safe and secure up there. Overall pretty pleased and did not punch through the wall, which is good. <laughs> Definitely didn't want to do that. Um, oh, and I also, I don't know if I ever mentioned that I hung this up, but this is just a, um, basically just a standard, you know, beer bottle opener. And that's the, um, Natty Bow, which is, or Natty Boy or something like that. He's one of the, the, uh, local, local um, beers around here. Apparently it's big in Maryland. <laughs> but Sydney had this from I think an apartment or something a while back so figured hey why not mount it up and that was kind of the best spot for it. So now we got that and the wood of that accents the wood of that I think and um, overall you know we have the standard inner teak behind it. But I think it looks pretty good and now we kind of have all of the cooking type items all in one condensed area which is always nice too. I finally got the bedside basket mounted. 
So right now I just have in it my night mask. Yes, I do use one, it gets very bright in here in the morning. <laughs> um, my Kindle, and then also my tablet. So all of this is easily accessible from right next to the bed. And from that angle, it kind of looks like it might get in the way of your head, but it really doesn't. My head kind of lays right around, right around here, so, and then I come straight up, so. Um, it is nice, it just provides kind of some additional storage. We also have the storage behind there. You can see my laptop. Um, but I figured for, um, just to kind of keep things less cluttered, since things kind of get lost up here. You know, you got wires and my laptop, things that are behind it. Um, this is kind of more for just dedicated for my tablet and my Kindle. Um, just so I always know where they are, since usually only use them on, on bed. I've been installing a little bit more shelving. So if you all recall, I finished up the dual spice rack over there and decided for the third spice rack that it was actually going to be best to use it kind of over the sink area. And my plan is actually to put in Sydney and I's uh, medication, multivitamin, so on and so forth. I also have up here, I just finished installing the kind of retaining uh, line for the dehumidifier. So while we're in motion, the dehumidifier is of course going to be off since we don't have AC power yet on the boat and there's no point in running it while you're underway. So this is going to be kind of the storage location for it. So what I did was I used some uh, paracord here and a little eye hook or kind of little eye hole here and mounted that in the wood. The paracord runs around nice and taut as you can see and it's just on a um, shackle there. And originally I was going to use a carabiner but sh uh, shackles are much better for when something's under load um, because in order to use the carabiner you have to get the carabiner head around the um, kind of eye screw or eye hole here and in the process of that by the time you get it clipped on and then um, you know you let it go there's a ton of slack in the line because you have to leave some slack to get the carabiner hooked onto it whereas with one of these shackles you don't need that slack um, you can get it nice and taut and then just screw in the, um, the little kind of um, shackle screw there so super taut this thing isn't going to be going anywhere anytime soon and it probably won't really be rubbing at all either because it's so taut, which is good. Also have a new shower sump pump coming in. This thing has been my arch nemesis for the past two weeks. It works sometimes, it doesn't work other times. Sometimes it doesn't turn on when it's wet. Sometimes it never turns off when it's dry. And uh, that's what I get for buying a $35 hunk of junk. So if you're buying a sump pump, not get a marine made. <laughs> Got the refund, and then I'm also uh, the, the new one that's coming in. I believe it's a rule. Well, you are uh, L, or excuse me, R U L E uh, rule. So pretty high end. It was like 120 bucks. So I figured, you know what? I've had it. Basically, found the most expensive one I could find, and figured that'll work. So I'll finally be able to take showers without having to worry about it overflowing. Um, that's why I have it in this plastic container just to help retain some of the water and you can see when I move it there you can see all the water down in there and I even taped off the slot or the, the drainage holes to the bilge because I don't want all this shower water constantly going into my bilge I'd rather get it in here and then sponge it out so the new shower sump is in place I've got it hooked up to the electrical connection there I'm actually just now filling up the fresh water tank since it was almost about empty. So I'm gonna let it fill up a little bit more and then go ahead and give this puppy a shot. I do like that the um, kind of the, the screen slash filter for this um, sump kit is actually really, really easy to take out. So basically you just, you just pop the lid here. So you just reach over here, pop the lid and then the lid comes right off. Just has some little plastic hinges, which is nice. And then to change the, or to clean the filter, you literally just lift it out just like that. And it's just kind of one small little angled piece. And then you clean it, you know, rinse it, whatever you want to do, and then go ahead and pop it back in there. So um, pretty, pretty straightforward and much easier to clean than some of the other 
filters that I've seen. Um, some will like, you know, wrap all the way around the bilge pump and it's like this flimsy piece of plastic that's hard to, you know, get back in line and everything. So um, this system also has a um, dedicated float switch. So rather than being one of the automatic bilge pumps that senses the water, it has a physical float switch, which I'm hoping will um, result in a more accurate ability to read when there's water in there. <laughs> Since, like I said, the, the old system that I had would sometimes not recognize the water and then sometimes would just continue to run even when it was technically there was no water left in it. So the sensor must have been you know, wet still or whatever. So um, the, the, the build quality on this is definitely looking a lot better. Um, it also came with a lot of extra attachments too, which I liked. The hoses I have this hooked up to are the smallest size that the um, sump pump kit kind of came with. And it also has two more additional connections. For instance, if you wanted to run um, more than you know, one singular shower into this um, sub box, you could potentially run up to three. Um, it has, which is kind of kind of nice, you know, for if you have multiple showers on the boat um, and they all run to the same location. Here's a look at some of those additional connections. So you have a um, much much wider connection there. This one's kind of the medium, and then you have the small, which all of the connections on my boat are the smallest. So um, came with three of the small connections, so I'm using two of them right now, one for the inlet, one for the outlet, and then it also has the two, um, the medium and the larger size there. Uh, it also has this, I think, is like a, a, a wire guide slash spacer, I wanna say, for the four wires, um, and then it also has this uh, temporary kind of plug. So if, for instance, you do have two connections hooked up to it and you end up removing one of them and you wanna plug one of the holes, I'm assuming this is to plug that additional hole um, so that you don't have to um, you know, worry about it, all the water coming through that hole. Um, it also has a joker valve right here, which is nice, so it prevents backflow um, back into the, into, the, um, into the enclosure. So that's a nice addition as well. And um, it does not have a manual override. It only has the, um, you know, just the just the two two connections here. So you have your positive and negative, which runs through the float switch and then goes to the bilge pump. Uh, bilge pump's rated for 800 gallons per hour, which is a little bit of a step up from the previous one, which was 750 gallons per hour. But that's definitely not the limiting factor. It's going to be more so the um, the capability to recognize that the water's in there and then also ensure that um, gets a good solid strong flow out so well I just went ahead and tested it and as you can see there's quite a bit of water on the ground which means I ran into some problems so um, unfortunately it was doing the same thing as the previous pump where it would run but not expel any water um, so I started troubleshooting that and that's technically the the term for it is called air locking so what happens is the water level goes so low that the pump starts to take in air but it's not designed to pump air. So what happens is you end up with air in either the pump or the line. And even as the water you know, continues to fill, 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 it can't get that air out. So then it starts overflowing. So um, with the previous sump pump, which didn't have a float switch, that was really the fault of the pump um, because the sensor wasn't turning off correctly. In this instance, it's actually kind of a combination of a fault of the way that the enclosure is designed, which um, in kind of uh, reality results in the float switch being too low. So you either have a float switch that is too low or you have a pump that's mounted too high. So uh, in this case, I think the pump's completely flush with the bottom of the enclosure. So in reality, this float switch should be raised up maybe about a quarter of an inch or half an inch. So what I did was, if you looked kind of down there in the corner, I actually stuck a roll of electrical tape, which seems to be kind of the perfect height such that you can see it's, it is angled slightly. So if you look at it, it's kind of angled such that this end is a little bit higher than that end. So what that means is that the water is gonna pool in this general area near the pump and it also means that there's going to be less water near the float switch. So it's kind of the same thing as raising the float switch because now as the water fills up, 
it's the the water since it pulls down here never reaches a level that airlocks the pump.